Good morning, and thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the Word. I'm Barry Bryson, and we're continuing our study of the Psalms of David, which have historical notations, um, give us historical the historical context um, uh, of the event uh, described in the song. We're in Psalm 52, uh, and um, a few days ago we were studying Psalm 34, and we said this was a psalm that was contemporary with it. In fact, it immediately precedes um, the events, or is right around the events uh, of Psalm of Psalm 34. Uh, actually, I think it immediately follows the events of Psalm Psalm 34. Um, so. Um, it says in the superscription that this is for the choir director, another one of those songs, a mass skill of David when Doag the Edomite came and told Saul and said to him, David has come to the house of Ahimelech. Seems to me unlikely that David, you know, had a choir <laughs> to sing this song when he wrote it. So uh, he has adapted it for the choir, but it was a very early song, perhaps uh, the earliest of the uh, one or two of the songs that are in the Psalter. This happens immediately, as we said, with Psalm 34, after David ran away. He escaped out the window with the help of his wife, Abigail, ran to the, um, to the, to the uh, Philistines, then came back, uh, claimed the sword of Goliath, was fed the showbread by the priests. And then all that was reported back to Saul by Doeg the, the Edomite, uh, and, and, and told Saul, David has come to the house of Ahimelech. Saul then goes and tries to f hunt down those priests that, that helped David and murders them all. And Abiathar escapes and joins David and is with David for the rest of the days that he's a renegade, which is a, over a period of many years. And eight of these Psalms uh, come from that period. And so then we have Psalm 52. Let's go ahead and read the Psalm. Why do you boast in evil, O mighty man? The loving kindness of God endures all day long. Your tongue devises destruction like a sharp razor, O worker of deceit. You love evil more than good, falsehood more than speaking what is right. You love all words that devour, O deceitful tongue. But God will break you down forever. He will snatch you up and tear you away from your tent and uproot you from the land of the living, and the righteous will see and fear and will laugh at him, saying, Behold the man who did not make God his refuge, but trusted in the abundance of his riches and was strong in his evil desire. But as for me, I am like a green olive in the house of God. I trust in the loving kindness of God forever and ever. I will give you thanks forever because you have done it, and I will wait on your name, for it is good in the presence of your godly ones. Okay. Some things we need to notice, and something I just need to remind you about the Psalms generally. The Psalms are fully human and fully defined. We have them because God wants every word of this, of them to be in Scripture for our learning, for our benefit. But they do not necessarily represent the feelings of God. They are the feelings of people who have taken their feelings to God, which is what we are supposed to do. If you believe that every sentiment in the Psalms is an expression of God's feeling as well, then you believe that God endorses the random murder of children because that's right there in Psalm 137. That's what someone's looking forward to in Psalm 137. And so let's stop thinking that every emotion expressed in the Psalms is somehow endorsed by God as a healthy emotion. Because I think we have some name calling and some schadenfreude going on in Psalm 52. We also have in Psalm 52 something we do not have in Psalm 51. By Psalm 51, David has lost this youthful trust that his best hope lies in the eternal justice of the universe, that he's innocent and therefore God will vindicate him because none of us are innocent. We all got it coming. What we need is grace and dependence upon God. He does realize this, that ultimately we have to find our refuge in God 
and at this and as a very young man he understands it we have to also understand that in the writing of this psalm david is experiencing for the first time the collateral damage his life will cause and he hasn't done anything wrong at this point later on he's going to cause a lot of collateral damage with his own sin but he has been responsible indirectly for the death of all those priests who helped him when he ate the showbread and he claimed Goliath's sword. And he feels responsible for that, no doubt, in his heart. And he is enraged over that. But he takes that to God. Who is the he that he's referring to in this song? It's not Saul. David has multiple occasions to kill Saul, and he doesn't because he respects Saul as God's anointed. It has to be the guy he mentioned in the superscription, Doag the Edomite, who uh, turned him in to Saul. Um, <clears throat> we, we see in this, in this song uh, a speaking directly, um, uh, speaking directly to the guy he's talking to. I'm talking to you, Doag. <laughs> this is about you. And this is what's going to happen to you, and it's going to happen, and I'm going to be glad, and people are going to look at what happens to you, and they're going to laugh at what happens to you. Um, it's cold, um, but it expresses what's in his heart. He's taken it to God. He's wrapped it up as praise to God. His trust is in God. He's not taking his own vengeance, but trusting God to... Um, in you know uh, promote righteousness in the universe and to punish those who are unrepentant and guilty uh, I will wait it says on your name it is good in your presence of your godly ones to wait he says in verse 9 um, it's an amazing amazing song and uh, I hope you spend some more time thinking about it and looking at it thank you so much for joining us uh, tomorrow we're going to be looking at Psalm 54